I have got exciting news for anyone who uses the free version of Google Workspace and it's to do with your Google Calendar. So Google have rolled out appointment schedules, meaning that you can now create a free booking page that you can then share with others so that they can book time with you themselves. If you currently use something like Calendly, then this is the same thing, but in your Google Calendar and it is brilliant. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use it from start to finish. So let's get started. So firstly, there are a couple of ways to open the appointment schedule. The first way is to click on the drop down arrow next to the create button here in the top left and choose appointment schedule. This will open up a pane on the left hand side where you can then set up your availability. So you can see here that it's automatically taken the hours, the working hours of nine to five and it's put me down as being available for the whole week. Don't worry, I'll be taking you through all of this in a second. The second way of opening the appointment schedule is to click once on a specific time and then click appointment schedule here and then click set up the schedule. Again, this will open up the same pane on the left hand side here and because you've opened it by clicking on a time in your calendar, it's automatically used that as your availability. So you can see here Monday 1.30 till 2 o'clock. Now you know where to find it, let's look at setting up your actual booking page. So I'm going to use this one here where we've got the specific time already set, just so I can show you how simple it is to change your availability. The first thing we need to do is give the appointment schedule a name. So for example, if you're going to be using this for people to book a discovery call with you, then call it discovery call. So click into here where it says add title and just type in whatever name you want to call it. Next, we move on to the appointment duration, which is here. And so this is like how long you want each appointment to be. So I'm going to leave that as the default 30 minutes, but you can click on the drop down here and choose one of the other durations, or you can click on custom to set up your own custom duration. Now we move on to the general availability. So at the top of this section is the option to repeat this schedule on a weekly basis. So every week going forward, we'll have the same availability as the times that we're going to set here. If you don't want that, then click on the drop down here and choose doesn't repeat. You now have to choose specific dates and times of when you're available. So to add a, add a time to the same day, click on this plus symbol here and we can choose another time. To add another date, click on the add a date button here and choose a date and then choose the time that you're available. And you can keep on doing that for as many dates as you want. If you do want the same availability to be repeated every week, then just keep this option here as repeat weekly. So you can see here, it says I'm currently available on Monday at 1.30 until two. This is because that's the time that I clicked on the calendar to open up the initial um, appointment schedule. So to change this time, we can just click on the time here and select another one. If we wanted to, add another time on the same day, we click on this plus symbol here to the right and choose more times. So we now have two time blocks of availability on the same day. The rest of the week here is down as being unavailable. So to change that again, click on the plus symbol next to the day that you want to change and add in the time that you want. If you want the times that we've just set up on this day here, if you want this to be repeated for the other days of the week, First click on the plus symbol next to each day that you want to be available. So if we leave the Wednesday, if we say we're available Thursday and Saturday, then click on the copy symbol next to the day that you want to copy. So say we want the, the same times as Monday, click on this copy symbol here. When you hover over it, it says copy time to all. Click on there and those times are now repeated to the days that you've put down as being available. If you need to go in and change any of the days, just click on the times and choose a different time. If you want to remove any of the times, click on the no entry symbol here, click on there, and it will remove that time from that particular day. You can also see in real time any changes that you make on the calendar itself here on the right. Scroll down on your availability page and you can also set the time zone that you want this to be shown in. I'm going to leave this as island time because that's where I am. So once you're happy with the schedule that you've set up, we next move on to the scheduling window. So this is where you can set the date range for your appointments and also the time in advance that people can book. So if you want a start or end date for your appointments, then you would click on start and end dates here and then choose when you want the scheduling to start and end. For example, if you're working to a project deadline for a client and you know that you can't take any calls for the next two weeks, 
Then you can set the start date for in two weeks time and leave the end date as never so it's ongoing. Or you can just leave it as being available now. The next part is the maximum time in advance that people can book an appointment with you. At the moment this says 60 days, but I'm gonna change that to 30 days so people can book a call with me a month in advance. You can also set the minimum time before the appointment that people can book. So this is currently set at four hours, but I don't want people to book a call with me on the actual day of the call as I need time to plan the content of the call. So I'm gonna change this to at least 24 hours so that people can't book within less than a day of the appointment. We then move on to adjusted availability. So if you're using the repeated weekly schedule but there's a couple of dates when your availability is different, this is where you can set that. So just click on change a date's availability and choose the date that you want to change. Then you can change the time or you can click on the no entry symbol here and say that you're unavailable completely for that particular day but it doesn't affect the availability for the rest of that week. Next, we have booked appointment settings. So click on the drop down here, and this is where we can set up the maximum number of appointments you want each day and the buffer time between appointments. So I'm sure you know that it's bad practice to book appointments back to back. You need at least five or 10 minutes between each one just to give yourself a bit of a breather or grab yourself a drink and get prepared for your next call. So I would tick the box under buffer time here and I'm going to choose 15 minutes. You can actually see how that's changed the number of slots in the calendar over here. So if I just remove the buffer time completely, and you can see there are four appointment slots in this afternoon section here. If I now add in a buffer time of 15 minutes, you can see this is now reduced to three appointment slots available in the afternoon. You can also limit the number of appointments you want to accept in, a, in each day by ticking this box here and adding in the number, but I'm just gonna untick that and leave that as it is. So the next section is telling you which calendar is being used for the appointment schedule. Now, because it's on the free account, you can only use one calendar for this. If you want to link more than one calendar, then you have to upgrade to a Google Workspace individual plan here. And the final section on this page is color. So you can just choose a color that you want the appointment slots to be shown in on your calendar. I'm gonna leave that as pink. And once you're happy, click next. So this moves on to page two of these settings. And the first option is the booking page photo and name. So this automatically displays the same as your Google account. So if you want to change the name or photo, then you need to do that in your actual Google account itself. So you would click on manage Google account photo and name here. Next, you need to choose how you want to meet the person. So click on this drop down here and you have the options of Google Meet, which will generate a link after the booking is made. The next option is in person and you would need to include a location now of where you're going to be meeting. The next option is phone call. So the person making the booking needs to give their phone number on the booking form. And the final option is none to be specified later. And this is where you manually update the actual booking later to put in a location. So I'm just gonna leave that as phone call so I can show you what it looks like on the booking form. Next, you can add a description. So this appears on the booking page and in the confirmation emails. So for example, you could put something about your cancellation terms in here. Again, it's up to you what you put in that description. You can leave it blank if you want to. So now we move on to the details included in the booking form. So if we click on booking form, and by default, it will include the first name, surname, and email address. And you'll see here that it's also included a phone number, and that's because we chose phone call earlier in the section up at the top here. Because we chose phone call, it's put in the required field of phone number. So you can also add your own questions to the form by clicking on add an item. So you can see there's two options, phone number and custom item. Phone number is already grayed out because we've already got that. So we want to put in a custom item. So this is where you would add in your question. So I'm just gonna quickly put in purpose of the call and I'm gonna tick the box to say, yeah, I need that, I need that to be answered. It's a required field and click on add item. And you can just repeat that for any further questions that you want to be included on the form. Once you have the questions added to the form, you can then edit or remove the question completely. You can see here the question that we've just added, purpose of the call. There's now the pen icon icon at the side to edit it or the, um, the cross to remove it completely. So the final section is the booking confirmations and reminders. And this is set so that you and the person who's made the booking will automatically receive a confirmation email with the calendar invitation. 
and that's it. Once you're happy with everything, click on save. So looking at the calendar, you can now see your appointment schedules marked in the calendar and you'll see the name that we gave it at the beginning, the discovery call. And there's also a colored block next to each section. So this shows the availability block that we've set. To view or edit your booking page, just click on the name or the colored block and it would bring up the options a bit like when you create a normal event in your calendar. So to edit the appointment schedule, just click on the um, pencil icon here at the top and it will reopen the pane cont containing all the settings that we just went through. To view your booking page, click on the blue button that says open booking page and this will open it in a new tab. When you're in the Chrome browser, you've also got the option in the top left to see what others see. So if I just click on there, this is the actual booking page that other people will see. So you can see everything that we set up is here at the top. So we've got 30 minutes appointments and phone call, along with the description here that we included in the settings. And that's your booking page. So if you want to delete the appointment block, then simply click on the name or the colored block to bring up this window here. And then click on the bin icon here to delete it. And it will ask you if you want to delete this week only or this particular appointment block for all of the weeks, or if you want to delete the entire appointment schedule. It also states that any previous appointments already booked will not be deleted. So now you have your booking page all set up, the next step is to share it so people can actually book times with you. To share this, click on the name or the colored block in your calendar, and then click on share. And this opens up your sharing options. So you can share the page as a link by clicking on copy link and then send that to whoever you want um, to book an appointment with you. So anybody who has that link will be able to book through your page. You can also embed the booking page on your website. So click on website embed here and it gives you another two options of either embedding it as a button with a pop-up. So if you click on there, you can change the text of the actual button here and you can change the color of the button here. And you'll also see there's a preview here of what it looks like as you change it. You can even click on the button to test it to make sure it works okay. The other option is to embed the booking page directly into a page on your website. So that you can see the embed code is here. You would click copy code and then paste that into the back end of your website on whatever page you want it to go on. And then once you're finished, just click on done. So let's take a look at what people see when they book a time with you. So I'm on the booking page and I want to book a discovery call with you. So I'm going to choose this time here and it brings up the form for me to fill in my details. So you can see I've put in my name, my email address, phone number, and the purpose of the call. I've put inbox management in Gmail and then you click book. So this is now telling me that a confirmation email has been sent to me and I can now click close. You'll now see that the appointment has times for that day has been changed and it's removed the time that I've just booked. So this is the email that people will receive when they book an appointment with you. It gives you all the details here. It's put into their calendar and you can see they've also got the option to cancel the appointment or book another one if they want to. And this is the email that you receive when somebody books an appointment with you. So it includes all of the details. It's in my calendar. And if you go back into your calendar, you'll see that the appointment is actually marked here with the discovery call, who it is, and their phone number and everything. So as the organizer, if you want to actually cancel the appointment yourself, then you can, you've can. you got the option here at the bottom to cancel the appointment. You can also click on the pencil icon here and edit any of the details. The person who made the booking will automatically receive an update email of those details. The good thing is that when you schedule an event into your calendar, if it coincides with the availability that you've set in your appointment schedule, then the booking page will automatically update. So people will only see your free availability. So if we go back into the booking page here, Thursday the 27th, you can see I've got four appointment slots here available. If we now go back into the calendar for Thursday the 27th, if I now put something, an event in here, if I just say admin and I put it down for 45 minutes and save. When we now go back into the booking form and we just hit refresh, Thursday the 27th, you'll now see that it's automatically updated and there's just three appointment slots available and it's removed the time that I've just set down in my calendar. So it's, it's really handy. It updates in real time whenever you add things yourself into your calendar. 
So we need to talk about limitations and because this is a free version, there are a couple of limitations to point out. The first one, you can only create one type of appointment schedule. So if we go back into the calendar and click on create button here and choose appointment schedule, it's automatically going to take you to the upgrade account page because we've already used the appointment schedule with the discovery call. So you can only have one type of appointment schedule Another limitation is that you can only use the one calendar and you can't link multiple calendars unless you're on a paid plan. Also on the free version, you can only send a confirmation email when the person books. So if you want additional reminders to be sent out, then you need to upgrade the account. And one final note is that at the time of recording this video, it's only available on desktop and not on mobile. So if you're a business owner and are getting fed up with all the, all the emails going backwards and forwards, trying to set up one-to-one -one sessions, this will be a game changer for you. I suggest that you give it a try. Let me know in the comments if you've used it yet and what you think. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.